started roasting coffee in 1991 uh, with a couple friends of mine. We were the first coffee roasters in the modern era uh, in South Dakota. Been pretty much roasting since then. And uh, it's probably my favorite part of the, the whole deal. I uh, own a coffee shop, wholesale retail operation, and, um, do food and live entertainment, that kind of deal. My favorite deal, my favorite thing out of the whole uh, shop, the business, is to stand in front of the roaster and make the product. But we do uh, basically four to five roasts, uh, a light city roast, city roast, full city roast, Vienna roast, and a French roast. Um, do it pretty much in the European style and that our French roast is uh, very dark, uh, greasy bean, uh, and the Vienna roast, same deal, just not quite as dark. You know, run into a lot of mislabeling and misnomers, of course, these days in coffee. So I like to think we're sticking to the traditional roasting style. I never fully understood coffee until I saw it roasted. The first time I saw it roasted, I was amazed at how hot it had, how hot you had to get it at 500 degrees down there, you know, or even higher than that, I think, right? And it was just amazing to me. And that, like, once you got it there, it took a really short time, and it, it kind of all like made me really appreciate. It all that much more. Seeing, you know, like this hard, dense green bean double in size and become totally brittle and able to just like disintegrate basically. You know, like I, I never realized coffee was like that. I never knew coffee was in a berry, you know, that it was like a fruit. Before I started roasting coffee and getting involved with it, I didn't know anything either. You know, I didn't know it came from a tree. I didn't know how you flavored coffee or anything like that. And yeah, it is something that's definitely taken for granted um, what it takes to end up in our shop, you know, in the roaster. It was amazing. The first time I saw it roasted, I was like, just, I, I, I stood right by the guy pulling it out. I wanted to see every motion that he made and, and what what he was going for in the end result. And, and then after the first couple of times I saw it roasted, I was just, I was in turmoil. I was like, God, you know, how do they know? I mean, there's so much variance. I mean, even with like one particular bean from one region. I mean, like, you know, the possibilities are endless with this. You know, you can go anywhere with it. That's the thing that people don't understand about coffee is it's not, it shouldn't be what it is here in America. You know, it should be something that's like, that is like, stained glass or paintings or glass blowing you know it should be something that's like you know really novel and different everywhere you go like it should be totally regional it shouldn't be just huge massive air pods of you know, Colombia. It does have this almost mystical draw to it almost. I mean, just doing it and, and, and making it happen and really paying attention to it and making slight adjustments and so forth is, it's challenging. You know, you have an instant sense of accomplishment when you're done. It, there's nuances with it, you know, and, and certain things that'll have, I mean, you know, the same varietal bean, you might get a different harvest from that same area and for whatever re reasons, uh, based on the weather, you know, what have you. 
the makeup of that bean might be slightly different and it might react slightly different when I'm roasting it this time. And um, I don't know, I think it it depends on who's who's showing you how to do it, you know. And even then I think a certain type of person has to be open to absorbing that in such a way that it's not just a mechanical thing, it's not just time and temperature, um, you know, there's a lot of love involved and, uh, and, uh, and appreciation for just the whole circle of it, you know.